First up, what is a data dictionary? Well, we'll start with some definitions. A data dictionary is that centralized repository that helps provide more detailed information about each of your data elements. So it's the technical metadata that helps analysts or other stakeholders utilize the information inside the dictionary to understand what is the structure, the type, the relationships between the data, or any type of constraints that the data may have. So what can someone expect to find in a data dictionary? There's a couple key elements that you'll probably see. You're obviously going to have metadata. You're going to have information about the relationships between the data. Uh, and some things that I mentioned before are called constraints. We'll jump into that in just a second. So with metadata, you're going to have things like the description of the data element. What is the column name? What is the data type? What is the length? What is the possible values that exist within that column? Relationships which refers more to things like the primary and foreign key aspects of connecting tables together, uh, helps identify how one field may connect or relate to another field within your data estate. And lastly, uh, when I talk about constraints, what I mean is what are those rules that actually dictate the values or the range of values that might exist within a particular data element? You know, what values can that take on? Uh, this ensures data consistency and integrity. All right, so... On to glossaries. A data glossary or a business glossary, probably more commonly referred to, is the user-friendly element uh, of defining the data within your organization. So this would actually contain the business terminology of what particular columns and calculations actually mean. This is to help other business stakeholders whenever they have questions about what does the data mean? We can establish more of this common understanding of the terms and, and concepts across your data estate. So we're building these taxonomies and these ontologies so we can then ultimately use them to communicate and promote more of this semantic consistency across our projects and across our teams. Glossaries will include a few different things. They'll usually have the business definition or the definition of the term. They'll have synonyms that could possibly be used in a different way, but for a similar definition. Uh, and they'll also have just the stakeholder who may own that particular terminology or just be the point of contact for actually telling someone, what does that kind of mean? These business definitions or the definition of terms are the clear, concise explanation of what that term actually means with respect to the business. It should probably include, like I mentioned, synonyms or, you know, very common, we have a book of acronyms within organizations that have to be defined. So what do those abbreviations or those acronyms, those terms uh, actually mean? And how can we make them easier to discover within something like a glossary? And lastly, I talked about stakeholder ownership, right? How can we identify the individuals that are actually responsible for maintaining and upkeeping those definitions that are stored within the glossary? And this is so we can ensure the accuracy and consistency of how these are utilized over time, and more importantly, across teams. But wait. Are these things really that different then? Let's figure it out by exploring a few other factors. Now, let's think about these concepts with respect to three different categories, right? Let's think about the scope. Let's think about the audience that they're typically associated with and ultimately the purpose associated with glossaries, data dictionaries, and catalogs. So number one, let's talk about scope. A data dictionary is gonna focus more on that technical detail about a database or a system. A glossary is going to focus more on the business terminology associated with data sets. Fun fact, if you're working with a modern data cataloging tool like Atlan, you should be getting the benefits of both a business glossary as well as a data dictionary and even more types of metadata that aren't being discussed right now. So number two, let's talk about the audiences. Well, if a data dictionary is more of technical detail about a system, it's likely going to be owned or traditionally owned by more of an IT or a technical audience themselves. On the flip side, we have the glossary, right? It's the business terminology. Mm -hmm. And so we need more than likely non-technical stakeholders or owners within the business to actually tell us how that information is being used and create those business definitions. Number three, the purposes of these different concepts. Well, a data dictionary was meant to assist technical teams and maintain that integrity and consistency of how data is stored and organized within a particular database or a system. So when we're developing new workflows or 
adjusting existing data pipelines, we can refer back to how that technical metadata was captured. On the glossary side of things, it's meant to ensure that semantic integrity. Are we all using terminology in the same way? And more importantly, when we build analysis on top of data, are we interpreting a particular column or table in the right way? Now let's actually double click into how they relate to data and analytics governance within your organization. Now, there are many ways that these components can enable an effective data and analytics governance strategy. Uh, we'll talk about four of them today. The first one being collaboration. We're going to talk about how it can help with automation. We can talk about how it's going to help with data stewardship and ownership, and ultimately how it's going to help with onboarding and training of new employees or new users within the systems. First, let's talk about collaboration. Well, these concepts really enable a collaborative governance environment because there's so many different types of stakeholders involved in data and analytics today, whether it's your engineers, your developers, your analysts, your analytics engineers, BI developers, what have you, right? There's such a mix of technical and non-technical stakeholders that there needs to be a place for these roles to live and collaborate uh, on different projects and use cases. Secondly is automation. Now, our organizations are dealing with more and more data and more and more use cases than ever before. And so in order to scale any type of governance program, we need to enable and focus on automation. Data catalogs, data dictionaries, business glossaries, we can utilize the metadata that these tools have to ultimately automate different flows to update a lot of these features. You know, so you don't have to revert back to manually maintaining Excel files for your data dictionaries and your glossaries. Third, let's talk about stewardship and ownership. Uh, I heard a great quote by someone that sort of said, tools like Atlin give governance uh, a face. And I really like this because if you think about what other personas across the data and analytics ecosystem are able to work with, your analysts have BI tools, right? There's something very closely associated with it. Your data engineers have ETL and orchestration and data warehousing tools that they can associate with their role. When it comes to governance, I think we all acknowledge it's extremely important, but data catalogs and glossaries and dictionaries are really where these things manifest in terms of technology. And so when it comes to being a data steward or owning data, you now have a way to ultimately bring that to life and have a place where these ownership policies and access policies can be stored and managed and updated. Finally, training and education. Whether you're starting a new governance program or you're onboarding a new user to your existing program, they're typically gonna start from something like a data catalog, a business glossary, or data dictionary to really understand what's available within the data state and what new use cases you can pursue. So focus on utilizing these concepts anytime you're starting a new workshop, or hosting a webinar, or whatever may enable a new user within your data and analytics ecosystem. In a nutshell, data dictionaries, glossaries, and data catalogs all help to enable your data governance strategy. And when you're utilizing all three of them together effectively in something like a modern data catalog, you're able to achieve better data quality and consistency. You're able to enable data discovery across your data state and ultimately enhance this communication and collaboration amongst the personas within your data and analytics org. If you're evaluating modern data catalogs and want to know how they can help enable your data governance strategies, be sure to click the link to our guided demos in the description below. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or just want to share your thoughts about Atlin, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you all soon in the next one. Thanks. Bye.